the second son and child of Bishop David Oyedepo, the founder of Living Faith Church International, aka Winners Chapel, Pastor Isaac Oyedepo, has resigned from the church to start his own. This was announced by Real Church Gist, a renowned church blog whose owner is a pastor in Living Faith Church, which confirms the authenticity of this news. Pastor Isaac Oyedepo is the second child of Bishop David Oyedepo, born on the 24th of February 1985. He attended Oral Robert University and also an ordained pastor in Living Faith Church International. He was ordained a pastor in 2007 by Dr. Kenneth Copland. He was recently appointed as the Global Youth Pastor of the Ministry. He is a renowned pastor, revivalist, an apostle who has dedicated his life to restoring the fire of God and reviving the people across the world. Pastor Isaac has made a significant impact in the ministry and continues to do so even as he resigns from the ministry. He gave an hint of his resignation during an interview with his brother-in-law, Pastor Steve Auger, when asked about his purpose. Pastor Steve Auger is also the SA to Bishop David Oyedepo. Before we take the video, please let us check the reactions of the public to this news. Thank you so much for watching to the end. Please do also like this video, share, drop your comments and of course subscribe so you can get more updated stories about this story.
Isaac also, yeah, just tell us, who is Pastor <laughs> Isaac Oyedepo? Wow. Um, hmm, hmm, hmm. Well, Isaac Oyedepo is the person, not the pastor. Okay. Um, so first of all, I, I'd want to say I'm a child of God. I think that's where I want to start before being called of God. First, the child of God. Um, secondly, a youth. Um, I don't see this as a discussion for a generation, but my generation. So um, I'm a youth in every way, um, but also one that strongly believes in the assignment that God has given to me uh, to reclaim a generation and to ensure that this generation ends up seeing the fire of God, Amen. revival in our generation. Amen. And so um, I, I would also say a learner, um, the one that doesn't learn every day is slowly dying. Mm -hmm. um, and so I, I see myself as a keen observer, one that wants to know why things are done the way they are done and to keep improving that way. Uh, I think in a nutshell, that is who you ask me <laughs> who I am. Right. Well, thank you for that. I, I, I know many persons uh, will be desiring to, to hear us even speak a little bit on how did we find our own purposes and our visions for life. I'd like Pastor Isaac to also share your own experience in how you found this purpose of yours or your vision for life. I think many will want to hear that. All right, so um, mine is a bit of a different experience in many, many ways. Okay. Um, I wasn't looking for one when I found one. Um, it was my sophomore year in Oral Roberts University, and that's why I have such a strong tie to that school, um, that prestigious university. I just finished classes uh, for the day. I think it was an afternoon period where I had some time and went to the hostel and slept, and I saw what you would consider as a vision. I saw myself back in Nigeria. Now I was in the U.S. I saw myself back in Nigeria. Saw myself, I think, around the Yanopaja area. And um, saw myself on what we call an Okada, right? The vision opened up. And I saw a very young chap. I wouldn't give the details of that. I've never shared that publicly as it were. But then that's when I got a clue of what God's plan was for my life. Now, without me having so much detail, surprisingly, I wrote it down, kept it in my wallet. Then came 2006 when I began to cry for God's plan and purpose for my life. And then he said, I've already told you what it is. And so he took me back to what my purpose was already unveiled four years prior. Now, it's, it's amazing that sometimes God may have shown you his assignment for your life and you didn't know that is what it was or is. I had no interpretation for it at the time, but the Lord moved me to write it down. I still had that paper. I scribbled this vision on four years prior in 2006. So when I was asking him, Lord, I want to know what your plan and purpose is for my life. He said, go back. I've told you before. And I was wondering, you told me when, how, <laughs> how did it happen? When did it happen? Now this is where God's plan and purpose for my life for my generation came in, right? I had no idea. Now I want to also say that you may not understand all the details of the vision initially, mm -hmm. but now in the phase that I find myself, I still find myself referring back to the original vision. Surprisingly, when I came back about a year ago, I still have the document I typed out. This is as far back as 2007. In the original form, typed, sealed, I still had a look at it and I saw God unveiling that. I told you this, 2006, it's compared to what I showed you 2003, so three years prior, sorry, not four years prior. Uh, and then now with what I'm telling you today, you still find it hidden in the same document. So mine was a bit of um, looking back to what he already showed me because at the time I wasn't asking for vision, but I found myself at the point in that vision where I was, if I remember correctly, sobbing. I saw the state of my generation 
in a little boy. Had no idea, had no understanding of it. And then I woke up with so much, so much concern, so much deep-rooted concern for what I saw in this vision that I was moved to write it down, kept it in my wallet. I changed wallet several times. I kept moving the paper from wallet to wallet to wallet. 2006, asking and crying to God, what is your plan for my life? He said, go back. I've shown it to you before. And then from there, he began to unveil scripture. Uh, my brother stated that it's very important to ensure that there is scriptural background. Now, at the initial vision, I didn't know it was a vision. I just wrote it down. So there was no scripture. But now scripture upon scripture upon scripture showing me exactly what his plan for the first phase as I knew it then would be. Um, and then uh, I've seen that with phase coming here and there, new phases, sorry, coming here and there, there's also scriptural backups, but it doesn't deviate from the original vision, right? Uh, so for me, that was my experience. Um, I didn't have to lock myself down. Uh, I didn't do that. It came to me without looking for it. But when it came to proving the vision, all right, I remember spending, if, if, if I'm not mistaken, not less than six months. Again, I didn't want to do it. Right? So day after day, I found myself opening the Bible and saying, Lord, speak to me, confirming that this is your plan for my life. The one who suit seven then. The one, the two, uh, first month, second month, third month. And I documented all of those things down still have the documents still today where the scriptures were stated. And then it got to the point where I said, okay, I surrender. I agree. Right? In life, it's very dangerous to take a step comparing yourself to another. He that compared himself to another is not wise. I tell you, you mentioned something that really struck me. If you are fulfilled in what you are doing, you should be the one to know. If you are not fulfilled, you also know. Life will be so frustrating getting commendation from man, but lacking fulfillment in your heart. There is just a way that you know, I am doing what I'm supposed to do. And like Pastor David said, it comes with divine abilities. God will not give you an ability that doesn't match your vision. Thank you so much for watching to the end. Please do also like this video, share, drop your comments, and of course, subscribe so you can get more updated stories about this story.